how many years in prison would every villain from What's New Scooby-Doo get for their crimes? This one was a little more tricky because the gang travel all over the world, so the laws will vary slightly, but I did the best I could. In the series premiere, there's no creature like Snow Creature, Avalanche Anderson scares away the competition for the big snowboarding contest. He scares both Chris Klug and Freddy into injuring themselves, and chases them around the slopes, netting him 21 years and 6 months in prison. In 3 Destruction, Hetelaine and Luis Cepeda team up to illegally mine and steal gold from underneath the Costa Rica Museum. In Costa Rica, if a theft has occurred that is 3 times the amount of the offender's base income, they will be given up to 9 years in prison. In Space Ape at the Cape, Professor Janet Lawrence dresses up as an alien in order to delay a NASA launch. In the process, she assaults three cops, runs from them, chases the gang, and uses an allergen powder to give a cop a weird looking rash. As a violation of Geneva Protocol Section 2441 War Crimes, she will be given life in prison for chemical warfare, plus another 20 years. In Big Scare in the Big Easy, Crawdad Mike and his bus driver dress up as Civil War ghosts in order to scare away the gang from uncovering their haunted tour ride scheme. To do so, they kidnap Daphne and keep her tied up in the mausoleum when Shaggy and Scooby get locked in too. Nothing too crazy for these guys, but they did manage to rack up 26 years worth of time in Louisiana State Prison. In It's Mean, It's Green, It's the Mystery Machine, Susan Dinwiddie tries to steal the Mystery Machine back via remote control, tries to run over Shaggy and Scooby, and almost sends the gang over a barricade off the side of a mountain. Plus the kidnapping and child abduction for Shaggy, endangering him and Freddy, and Susan's looking at 4 life sentences plus 36 years in prison. In Rivas Ross Regis, Felidia Flanders tries to gain fame and fortune by taking on the appearance of the ghost of Rufus Rockus. In the process, she tries to murder Lindsay Pagano, chases and ties up Shaggy and Scooby, and throws a fireball at everyone, causing a big fire. In total, Flidio will get a life sentence plus 22 years in Nevada State Prison. In Roller Ghoster Ride, Terry dresses up as the Roller Ghoster to sabotage Thrill Ride Park. She endangers four kids parasailing, almost slices Daphne, Freddy, and Velma, scares the ride attendant, and almost kills Shaggy and Scooby as well. Terry's going to get 4 life sentences, plus 27 years in prison. In Safari So Goody, Henry and Honey Hunsecker control and steal various wild animals in order to sell them on the black market. And according to the laws of Malawi, poaching would net them about 30 years in prison. In She Sees Sea Monsters by the Seashore, Crunchy Granville pilots a mini-sub disguised as a sea monster to preserve the sea turtle habitat, inevitably attacking and breaking a family's boat and the gang's too. Add that to the assault on Daphne, and he's racked up 92 years in prison. In A Scooby-Doo Christmas, Professor Higginson dresses up as the Headless Snowman to steal gold from the town. In the process, he endangers a kid and chases them around, and chases the gang as well. He even throws the head at Shaggy, which makes a slicing sound, so it's probably sharp metal. Also, he destroys a bunch of the houses, so for not being in the Christmas spirit, he's going to receive 38 and a half years in prison. In Toy Scary Boo, Walter Claphammer designs a device to control toys in order to divert attention from his art theft. He scares the night crew guy and the gang, destroys the store, later attacking the gang and tying up Sandy Gordon and Freddy. All in all, he's going to be sentenced to 71 years in Coolsville Penitentiary. In Lights, Camera, Mayhem, Vincent Wong disguises as the Faceless Phantom in order to disrupt the production of his movie. He replaces his actor's makeup with avocado, which he's highly allergic to, breaks the bridge while Freddy is crossing, and attacks Velma while she's performing a stunt. Two attempted murders, two life sentences, plus four years for attacking Velma. In Pompeii and Circumstance, Ugo Di Rinaldi and Captain Guzman illegally excavate ancient artifacts so they can build on Italian land. According to Italian law, any illegal excavation of artifacts shall be treated as theft, netting them both 10 years in prison. When added to various assault charges, they're looking at 80 years in the penitentiaria. In the season 1 finale, The Unnatural, 
Bob Taylor disguises as Cab Craig's ghost to stop Luis Santiago from breaking the home run record. He throws the fireball at Luis and the gang too. He also breaks the stadium lights, and with the average attendance of an MLB game in 2003 being about 27,167, plus about 75 players, coaches, and umpires, he adds quite a bit of reckless endangerment charges. Also, he locks Shaggy and Scooby in the sauna, and breaks the bleachers while chasing the gang, so in total he manages to set an all-time high of life in prison plus 27,349 years. In the Season 2 premiere, Big Appetite in Little Tokyo, Professor Pomfret creates a kaiju shaggy monster and attacks the city. In the process, he also tries to squish the gang with the robot, just barely being saved by Dogbot, so let's tally three attempted murders here. That right there is good for three life sentences, plus the vandalism and assault at seven more years in Japanese prison. In Mummy Scares Best, Prince Kazal al and Mademoiselle Chantal hypnotize the town in order to cover up their plot to divert the Nala River to Zalgara. Theft carries a pretty tough penalty of life in prison, so maybe they should have thought that one through. Either way, he still gets charged for climbing the pyramids and assaulting the gang, Melbourne, and the tourists, and in total they both get life in Egyptian prison and Prince al gets an extra 56 years. In The Fast and the Wormiest, Gibby Norton disguises as El Gusano Grande in order to impress Velma, and in the process attacks Lupe, the other racers, and the gang. All of those aggravated assault charges racked up 48 years in Mexican prison, but since he's not being tried as an adult, he actually gets sentenced to rehabilitation. Nice. In High Tech House of Horrors, Sherry the house computer goes haywire and starts trying to kill people and keep them behind the glass. Also, she stomps on Scooby's tail. Not cool. Unfortunately, we can't charge AI with these crimes. Yet. But Professor Ostwald will get six years for child endangerment. In The Vampire Strikes Back, Steve and Stu Fortescue dress up as vampires to ruin the Hex Girls music video, which in my book is grounds for life in prison. But in the Romanian court system, we can really only get them for kidnapping Dusk and Freddy, so 20 years apiece in Romanian prison. In Homeward Hound, Meadow steals a bunch of prized dogs in order to rig the dog show. The six prized puppies and Scooby get snatched and caged up. As the cat creature, she breaks the show's props, grabs this dog, and throws it at a cop. All in all, she ends up getting 42 years in prison. In The San Fran Psycho, Rudy Banyas tries to sabotage the grind games in order to make Ryan Sheckler win. In the process, she kidnaps one contestant, endangers the entire stadium, assaults another contestant, and chases the gang around. Those reckless endangerment charges really pump her numbers up to a grand total of 20,000 in 20 years at Alcatraz. In Simple Plan and the Invisible Madman, the band consisting of Zeke Zillian, Jack Hunter, Yves De La Fay, and Gibby Norton try to replace Simple Plan as a headliner at the Montreal Rock Festival. To do this, they try and kill Simple Plan, and later the gang, before resorting to kidnapping the band and holding them in a bank vault. With everything tallied up, the four culprits receive a staggering 19 life sentences plus 95 years in Canadian prison. In Recipe for Disaster, Trudy Lowe tries to steal the Scooby Snack secret formula, which gets her six years in prison. But the real culprit is Penelope Bailey, who tries to defend the formula by almost killing Shaggy and Scooby. Along with scaring the gang, she manages to get a life sentence, plus 18 years for the other crimes. In Large Dragon at Large, Jameson Stephen Ripley rigged up a robotic dragon to scare the Renaissance Fair. In doing so, he commits arson three times and nearly kills an entire tent of people. Add that to some other fire-breathing assaults, and he manages to get 27 life sentences, plus 41 years in Scottish prison. In Uncle Scooby in Antarctica, Monroe Hopper dresses up as a fish creature and causes havoc at a United States Antarctic base. According to the Comprehensive Crime Control Act of 1984, we can use US law to sentence him to two counts of child abduction and kidnapping, plus the menacing charges and some 36 years extradited to a US prison. In New Mexico Old Monster, Colonel Henry Thornwall disguises as the Wakumi, a native hawk cryptid. He kidnaps this climber, and Daphne too, keeping them locked in a cage, plus stealing Shaggy's sculpture and scaring the gang, and in total he's going to get 43 years in New Mexico prison. 
In the season 2 finale, it's all Greek to Scooby, Susie Smythe dresses up as the mythical centaur in order to scare away people from the entrance to Atlantis so she can claim to find it first. In the process, she assaults her partner and tries to get Shaggy too, since he has the important amulet. For her actions, she's going to receive 8.5 years in Greek prison. In the season 3 premiere, Fright House of a Lighthouse, Verona Dempsey dresses up as the lighthouse keeper in order to shut off the light for shipments for her competitors. She kidnaps Daphne and scares the gang, and even pulls Scooby's tail in the process. All this ends up netting her 24 years in Michigan prison. In Go West Young Scoop, Gibby Norton breaks into the control room of a Robot Wild West show and turns on the dangerous robots. These robots were created by Myron Scrim, aka Sheriff Lawman, so he could be the savior of the town. Instead, all he did was endanger the gang, chase them down, tie them up, and lock them behind bars. So, playing hero gets him 28 years. Also, Gibby Norton's supposed to still be in jail from the Simple Plan episode. Did he break out? Six more years for breaking and entering, and another six for escaping custody. In WrestleManiacs, Kurt and Connie Crunch dress up as the Titanic Twist in order to scare their dad into retirement. Which would be nice if they hadn't tried to kill these two wrestlers and Shaggy and Scooby, kidnapped another wrestler and Freddy, and kept them all tied up. Because they landed themselves three life sentences plus an extra 37 years in the cell. In Ready to Scare, Guy Laboton dresses up as one of Notre Dame's gargoyles to kidnap Daphne's cousin before the fashion show. But she's in on the plan, becoming the gargoyle and kidnapping Shaggy and Scooby, and chasing the gang which will get her a light 8 year sentence in French prison. In Farmed and Dangerous, Neville Poppenbacher disguises as the demon farmer to try and steal the recipe for Mr. B's popcorn. Using a scythe, he tries to slice Shaggy and the dogs, and also steals a tractor trying to run over the gang, and in total for his crimes he managed to rack up 44 years worth of time in prison. In Diamonds Are Our Ghoul's Best Friend, Galina Korzhakov disguises as the Frozen Fiend to steal the diamonds from the Emperor's Cup. Under Russian law, theft of this magnitude carries a penalty of 10 years in prison plus a 1 million ruble fine. Add that to her assault of the police officers and the other players, plus grand theft of the Zamboni, she's looking at 28 years and 45 days in the Gulag. In a terrifying round with a menacing metallic clown, Mare Snipper controls a clown animatronic to crash the International Putt-Putt Golf Tournament. In the process, he kidnaps this kid, scares the gang, and picks up Shaggy and tries to eat him. In total, he's going to receive about 30 and a half years in prison. In Camp Come On I Wanna Scare Ya, Grey disguises as the toxic terror in order to drive away the new constructors. She ends up scaring the campers and camp counselor Shaggy, tries to hit him, and destroys a bunch of buildings. Oh, yeah, and literally has acid as part of the costume. As a breach of the Geneva Protocol, this would garner a sentence of life in prison, plus the other 17 and a half years worth of charges. In Block Long Hong Kong Terror, Wu and his helpers control this dragon in order to steal the prized candy ring. However, things get messy, and they try to bite Shaggy and Freddy, have to kidnap Shaggy and Mei Ling, and end up wrecking the city. In total, Wu and his gang will serve 38 years in Hong Kong prison. In Gentlemen, Start Your Monsters, Jimmy and Cindy control a skeleton robot that terrorizes the stock car race. With all the reckless driving charges and damages to the track, plus, you know, trying to kill Freddy here, they're gonna end up in prison for life, with an extra six years on top. In Goldpaw, Drill Sergeant Payne disguises as the gold monster to try and steal the gold out of Fort Knox. In the process, he also steals a tank, a military jeep, assaults two police officers and chases the gang. In total, he racked up 72 years in prison and a dishonorable discharge. In Reef Grief, Spencer Johnson hypnotizes and kidnaps a total of nine people into a building an underwater tunnel for him, and under the Commonwealth Criminal Code Act of 1995, within Divisions 270 and 271, slavery charges run 25 years per. In total, he receives 288 years in Australian prison. Also, this coral monster thing terrorizes a bunch of people, and I sentence it to the Bikini Atoll treatment. In the series finale, E-Scream, these demonic venonat things start terrorizing the video game convention. 
I could count up the endless assault and menacing charges, the false imprisonment, and the attempted drowning of the gang, but none of it matters since this is just a VR game that Dr. Ostwald prepared for Velma. What an anticlimactic way to end the series. Well, that concludes my legal analysis of what's new Scooby-Doo, something I'm sure you definitely asked for. If you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching, I hope you stick around for whatever's next. Um, until then, bye!